Good morning, uh, and it's a very early morning. <laughs> uh, because of the heat, I decided to get up early every day uh, to be at work at 6 a.m. Meaning I can go home and throw myself in the shade in the office. It's not that hot, and there's another benefit: I'm not going through any traffic jams, which is always good. So yeah. But that's not the reason I'm making this video. Uh, I'm making this video now that I've set up the scene for my Spain preview or review. I still don't know. I mean, it's before the season, so I'm calling it. Uh, it's before the season, so I would like to call it a preview. But then, you know, I'm actually reviewing the jerseys. So it's not a preview in the classical sense because I'm not, not telling you who is gonna win, although I mean, I might put in a little comment of who I think is are the, are the favorites of the first two leagues that I've covered so far, it's well, the first three, uh, it's pretty clear, Manchester City, Paris Saint-Germain and Juventus. Yeah, and we'll see for the Primera División how it will go. But yeah, having set this up, I said uh, at the beginning of my Serie A review, preview, jersey review, let's say it that way, um, the Serie A is by far my favorite league to watch. And it still is, despite it not being the strongest one. And um, that of course begs the question, why? Well, I mean, the obvious, the absolutely obvious is that yeah, AC Milan is my favorite team. There is no question about that. Uh, they're my co-favorite team. Uh, when I say fa favorite team, I mean favorite team outside of Austria. And uh, that's also a story probably for another video. Uh, why AC Milan became my favorite team. But yeah, I just say 1990 and you take it from there. Um, so obviously i was always following serie a in addition when i grew up serie a was the best league for my first 10 years of being a fan yeah first eight i want to say but yeah i we could go even 10 i mean there was a crazy year in there where uh, suddenly a champions league final without an italian team appeared which was not thinkable uh, for most of the time there was always an Italian team in there um, but yeah being in the biggest league uh, that surely will put all the focus on Italy and it's kind of for me an enigma how Italy lost this prime position uh, they really had it all the Italian league look at uh, in the 90s look at the European Cup finals I mean if you just go through the Champions League or European Cup finals I started in 1990 where we had Milan against Benfica. Then we had an off year. We had Marseille against uh, Red Star Belgrade, which I ran as Red Star. Um, in 92, Barcelona against Sampdoria. Sampdoria. They became champions. They had actually a great team back then. Uh, just two names, Mancini and Viali, were their strikers. But they really had had, had a great team. And then came the three years where always Milan was in the final, only winning two. It was, of course, uh, Marseille against Milan, then my favorite final of all time, Milan against Barcelona. Then we had uh, Milan against Ajax, and then came Juve's reign with three finals where they only win once, but they didn't do it quite like Milan. It was um, Juve versus Ajax, then Juve Dortmund, and then uh, in 98 Juve Real Madrid. And only then came the freak show of uh, Bayern Munich against Manchester United. And then in 2000, it was suddenly Real Madrid Valencia. That was the first time that an Italian team didn't even make it uh, past the quarterfinal stage in the Champions League. And that was a big deal back then. So you see the 10 years where there was only, were only two finals without an Italian team. Uh, but once the second time this happened, yeah, then Italy kind of fell off. They came a little bit back again in 2003 
when suddenly there are three in the semifinals and an old Italian final between Milan and Juventus. Um, and honestly, Milan and Juve kept the kept Italy a little bit afloat in the mid 2000s. But when it came off, it came off badly. I care, like I gotta say. So yeah. So Italy having the best league. Uh, this is a clearly a big factor in me being uh, watching Serie A. This is also where, you know, first I followed Milan, but you know I always like Italy as a country itself, uh, and they have so many nice cities. And then if all, in all those cities suddenly uh, you see teams popping, um, Fiorentina. I mean, the city of Florence is pro is probably one of the greatest in all of Europe. Then you have, of course, Rome as two teams. You have Naples, um, you have even smaller cities like Siena had a team once in. And then of course there are those classic <laughs> uh, southern or coastal teams that uh, Livorno is not a southern team. But you know I'm talking about Bari, um, Lecce, all those, Pescara is a little bit more north. Uh, just the names uh, do it for me. It's just. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, so I know a lot about these teams, about their rivalries, and despite all this rivalry, the only one that I really live, uh, yeah, the only one that I really live is the uh, Milan Inter rivalry, um, and to a certain extent, Roma Lazio rivalry. Uh, Roma became my second favorite team just because, uh, yeah, I was in the city of Rome, and I really like how Ice Roma takes over the Roman colors and the f my favorite and here's how Italy crazy I am my favorite period of history is the Roman Empire Bar none. that's uh, for me it's just amazing the amount of sophistication that this society has achieved uh, with that little means uh, so yeah there's also another reason that's why I somehow I somehow like Roma they have the Capitoline wolf in their crests and yeah all the, the Roman city colors and yeah now when I compare it to other leagues which other leagues do I like to watch I think the second one yeah probably would be the Austrian league but uh, these days no I barely see Austrian league games except uh, my favorite team plays and I get to it uh, but my second favorite to watch is probably Spain. I mean, I never miss Real Madrid against Barcelona or Barcelona Real Madrid. Um, but I find myself when I have to watch, let's say there are some lesser level games. I saw it this year when I finally got the zone uh, where, you know, I can finally watch everything that I really want, starting from NFL to uh, Serie A, Primera División, Liga, Premier League. Um, and you know, what, uh, what What did I put on? I mean, uh, of course, every weekend I watched Milan. Uh, I usually watched uh, the bigger games in Italy as well, but sometimes I find myself even putting on a game like Verona against Udine. Yes, it helps that um, I was last year, uh, I, was with, I was traveling with my wife and we visited Verona and Udine. So I mean, there's an obvious connection there. But yeah, uh, it's that crazy in a way. I mean, I, the Rome Derby, I usually also watch. And all those big games, Juventus, Napoli, it's a no-brainer for me. Those are games I, I actually, I also think that uh, other than England, there's no other league that has such a great atmosphere in the stands. Yes, the Italian fans, club fans, they're a little bit more leaning to the right these days which i find a sorry state and we can talk about all that um uh, no, what's the not tifosi because tifosi is the the ultras uh, about the ultra culture uh, which yeah has some nice touches to it but uh leans more and more to its extremism uh, politically and for that reason yeah 
it's not nice these days anymore to visit an Italian game without being conscious of uh, what colors you are wearing on yourself. So that is, uh, there's a, definitely a dark story and that's also part of why Serie A fascinates me. Because it's not only all um, nice and there is this beauty of the country of Italy, of the great atmosphere that you have in the stands with all the flag waving, uh, chants and so on. And then there's also this darkness to it and I think this is the contrast with um, radicalized fans, um, with fights breaking out, with deteriorating stadiums. Um, yeah, it's fascinating. Now, going, going back. So, Serie A wins my personal. And I also have to say, and that's the last thing I say about now Serie A, that Serie A these days is actually not this 1-0 uh, league. I mean, yes, they are, the Italians are probably still technically the most advanced league. If you watch Serie A, you can see that they barely do something crazy unless there is a coach that uh, puts everything on the head. But it's all technically sound. You, you usually what's missing is, of course, the skill level. I guess in some way or another so yeah uh, but the league itself it became entertaining to watch and I think the average goal uh, scoring level is actually uh, one of the higher ones among the top five leagues I think I, I read this somewhere and I also got the feeling that watching Serie A there are actually goals now second most is the Primera División as, as I said or La, La Liga I don't know which. I actually like Primera División much better than La Liga. <laughs> but yeah, Barcelona games. If Barcelona plays a big team or if there's like a uh, Madrid derby, I actually don't watch the Madrid derby as religiously as I watch, for instance, the Rome derby. But you know, if there are nice games up there, I, I can appreciate the Sevillas of this world, the Valencias, uh, Depor was, gr uh, was for a time great, now it's not. Uh, so you know, those bigger teams, I actually enjoy watching as well, but uh, not as much. I mean, I usually watch Barcelona, uh, although I have to say they are less and less becoming the great team to watch that they used to be. Um, but I'm a little bit tired of Barcelona and Real Madrid beating up on everyone else. Uh, that's something I don't get in Serie A. Usually when a game is 3-0, I don't continue watching, I turn it off. Uh, because I cannot stand this beat down, beat down, beat down, it's, a, it's boring. I want to have a game that is um, exciting to watch. Closer games, uh, that's, you know... It's something to play for, and you can, uh, and it keeps you entertained. And Real Madrid winning 6-1 is not entertaining to me. It might be for um, the Madridistas, it's not for me. And yeah, uh, the other thing that, uh, that I find is that most La Liga games are not as physical. Physically, yes, you can see Real Madrid against Barcelona, that's typically physically. I mean, uh, when there's something at stake, the Spanish uh, teams are really going for it. But you don't find this physicality that I find in other leagues in La Liga. Uh, it's still a little bit staggering to me. I remember when uh, the first time I was in Barcelona and I was watching, I think it was the first league game in, I want to say 2000 first game of Barcelona that season um, and it was Barcelona against Malaga uh, we had seats all the way up in Camp Nou and as great as Barcelona was to watch you know you see the passing you see the movement forward offensive play um, there were no fouls even Malaga uh, at that time a team that you know no one really thought much about I mean they were more a relegation candidate even Malaga was supposedly to a team that 
did not foul. They were no fouls. And not that I'm for uh, unfair play, but I want to see a little bit of some physicality in play. And that was not there. And that was, uh, and that still, when I see a Spanish game, uh, it really needs to escalate that you see some physicality in there. That might be a good thing. I think Spain is probably the league when you want, if you want to see skill, Spain is the best league to watch. Uh, and with having the two best teams in the world in there, yeah, you're bound to see greatness. Yeah, so don't get, get me wrong. Uh, the third most is the Premier League. And there, yeah, I can, I mean, it has to be a bigger team, but there I actually find myself uh, it's not that I watch uh, very closely, but I do watch uh, here and there. And even if it's Manchester City against Huddersfield, uh, if it is in a break between the uh, Serie A games, and I don't find a Serie A game that's not appealing to me, uh, yeah, the Premier League is usually a good choice. And also uh, Serie A is more on a Sunday and Premier League is on a Saturday. So if I want to watch on a Saturday, if I get the chance, um, I'm trying to only watch. At the moment, I only try to watch at most two games a week. But you know, sometimes you're at home, it's uh, weather is bad outside, uh, kids are behaving. Um, I want to relax, or we want to relax, and yeah, let's put on a game. Premier League is actually uh, interesting. And uh, the one thing that always gets me about England, that together with Serie A, they have the best fans. Uh, it's a little bit less now that it's so corporate in the Premier League, but still you have all these chants going on, which are, for instance, just missing in Spain. Um, then Liga, yeah, very rarely, and I don't have the rights to watch the Bundesliga, but I'm one of the few Austrians where I'm not crazy about the Bundesliga. I mean, there are Austrians that... Um, say the Bundesliga is their favorite. Yeah, it's a German-speaking league and I even would say that for many, if you want to watch your first game in a stadium, um, I would actually recommend the Bundesliga. It's that uh, and why? Because the ticket prices in the Bundesliga are not as crazy. Uh, the Bundesliga has understood that it's uh, not necessarily about making a lot of money, but about attracting the fan and keeping the simple fan. The, you know, the worker, if you take Dortmund or Schalke, the guy who works in the coal mine, to give him uh, soccer. And you can get very reasonably priced Bundesliga games. I think even a Bayern Munich game for me was always, uh, I hate Bayern. But if you want to see great soccer uh, living in Austria, you have to watch Bayern at one point. Unless you want to do a big trip, but it's the closest one where you can see world-class soccer. And in addition, I would say that going to a Bayern game is one of the safest experiences watching soccer. Uh, the hooligans are more in the north and the south. I, you barely hear about fights or anything else breaking out at the Bayern Munich game. Uh, even when they play Dortmund, yes, there might be some touting, but it's never to the point where it um, uh, gets violent. So uh, for that reason, I would say the Bundesliga is probably the best one to watch if you want to watch a league game of the big five. I mean, I don't have any experience with France. But for that reason, uh, the fan friendliness, you, pr you probably have the best in-stadium experience in Germany. Uh, and the worst you probably have in Italy. Um, the Premier League has all the fans in nice stadiums, but the Premier League is extremely expensive to watch a Premier League game. Uh, you have to put down so much money that I don't think it's necessarily worth it. Uh, but I have to say, if you are new to soccer, uh, the Premier League is probably one of the most entertaining to watch. There, I mean, it gets a little bit more um, continental style, but the Premier League is one where there's const constant action, up, down, up, down, up, down. You barely see a really boring game. Is it great soccer all the time? No. Uh, especially the lower level English teams, they are still uh, kicking, rushing it up and down the field. Uh, 
and that's the reason why I don't like the Premier League too much because you see a little bit too much of this uh, fast paced low skill style uh, that England became famous for yeah but yeah I do find myself watching if you want to see skill uh, of course you gotta watch Primera División and yeah it, I think Serie A is an acquired taste, but I think it becomes more and more entertaining. But for most time Serie A was definitely an acquired taste. But it is my favorite. I actually, uh, I don't want to say so superiority, but uh, if you watch Serie A and you can enjoy it, then you really are a soccer nut. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I am. I am. I sometimes wonder how my wife does keep up with me. But yeah, those are my few thoughts on the different leagues that I have. Um, I think if I would get the Bundesliga package, I would probably put the Bundesliga somewhere there with um, the Premier League. But I think I'm more enticed by, let's say, Tottenham against West Ham, something like, okay, that's a derby. Uh, Everton against West Ham, then I would say Werder Bremen against Frankfurt. It's just the history of the of the English teams just runs a little bit deeper. Uh, but you know, I know my way around the Bundesliga. I mean, I can tell you a lot about these teams because I grew up with that. I mean, uh, the German league is still. I mean, there were times that I was watching at least. Uh, uh, the daily summary, uh, the, the weekday summary of the games. So you know, you get to know it. And of course, living in Austria, you always know about the Bundesliga. And I had friends that were watching Bundesliga, 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 and thinking it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Which I never thought about it. I mean, for me, if it, it uh, an all German final or if Germans are doing well in the European competition, still seems odd to me. Uh, to the, because I don't think I never think of the Bundesliga as one of the top leagues, but it is. You probably will have the best fan experience in there. Uh, German stadiums are huge. They're usually packed. The chants are maybe not as passionate as they are in Italy or glorious as they're in England, but they can be quite impressive. And probably Dortmund has the most impressive stadium. Uh, the only Bundesliga games that I've been to are unfortunately Bayern and Bayern isn't known for everything but a great atmosphere. I mean it's probably got better in the new arena but yeah there's they are definitely not known for a great atmosphere. I mean I even remember that at, uh, when they were still playing the Olympia Stadium uh, that they used loudspeakers to reflect back that you get a better atmosphere. Well, those are my few cents on why I like Serie A and what I think about the other leagues. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of that. And I will talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.